that the patient died at home. So that is the most worrisome for us because we even didn't know that this patient had an event and died at home. So if you look at that, a projection, that is what is happening with if you combine all the cardiovascular events with the cerebral vascular event over a period of time, if you look, almost 1 in 33 patients need hospitalization for these kind of adverse events. That is quite common, 1 in 33. That means one even. Then if you look at the most of the time, this these kind of surgeries are associated with the more and these kind of surgeries are associated with the very less maze. And over a period of time, if you look at that, that myocardial infarct and ischemia events are coming down because maybe you have better monitor and better management of the drugs, but that stroke, stroke incidents are slowly going up. So that is why you have to be very, very careful with these kind of patients. So now to diagnose something, you need a proper guidelines. Why we are missing this maze? Why we are missing this all these post-operative events? Because we try to follow this universal definition for MI in the post-operative setting. So this is in circulation 2012, what they say about the, the what you mean by universal definition. If you look at that, most of the changes may not applicable to our, your post-operative patients. Then they divide MI into five types. Okay. This is not related with the variance. This is so type one means the typical acute coronary syndrome. Why it is happening? Because of the plaque rupture of the vulnerability of your plaques. The second one is due to the, the ischemic imbalance. That means sub, there is some abnormality with the supply and demand. These patients may have a coexisting coronary artery disease, may not have a, a coronary artery disease. So even without your coronary normal, you may have a, a secondary to ischemic imbalance in the post operative period. These are the patients can be corrected, prevented, and treated. Then you have a type 3 where the patient died because of the infarction even before you diagnose it. You label it as a cardiac death, but you don't know really because of what the patient died because you didn't have a time to take the sample or even before the result comes, that patient died. Then these two are the intervention. Either one is a percutaneous intervention, another one is your surgical interventions. Even after your revascularization, you may have some post-operative MI. So post-procedural MI, that is divided into 4A, B, and then 5. But most of the injuries in the post-operative period is type 2. Now, people don't use the term perioperative MI. They started using the term myocardial injury after non-cardiac surgery. This is the very